I I don't know what that is, but I don't like it. Disney has been on a live action slash realistic film rampage in the last few years, taking popular and well established cartoon titles that were released decades ago and turning them into, well, more realistic imagery, I guess is the best phrase for it. The idea is great as far as being monetary successes, as it's the way the sequels find so much success themselves, even though they may not live up to the same standards as their original films. These live action films have always been disturbing to me for some reason that I couldn't put my finger on, and it wasn't until I watched Captain Marvel that I found out what exactly that was. So Captain Marvel was... Eh, I didn't care for it. Not because of the negative popularity that Brie Larson brought to it, but because I felt that I had no reason to vouch for her character. She was given everything that she needed to complete her goals at the beginning of the movie, and she had some affinity for causing wanton destruction because she felt like she was better than everyone else, which kind of sounds like a villain to me. This is all secondary though to how absolutely expressionless Carol is throughout the movie. She's either slightly upset, or happy, or smug, and any other emotion that she might have been able to express? Illegal. It's not like Brie Larson isn't capable of displaying emotions either. I've seen her movie Unicorn Store, which, because my family found her on Netflix and wanted to watch it one night, and she, surprise, isn't a deadpan self-righteous deus ex machina specifically brought in for two scenes in Avengers Endgame. These live-action remakes of old cartoon films suffer from the same problem, but instead of being a character problem, it's more of an issue surrounding the medium that they've been translated into. By making the films a realistic adaptation, because they're technically not live action, Disney limits themselves to the appearance of realistic things. Nothing is new under the sun as the saying goes, and fully CGI animals have been rendered into movies before. The most prominent example I can think of is Aslan from the Narnia movies, and that's because he's meant to be a realistic lion set in a realistic-ish setting, according to the source material. It's to be expected. Seeing these realistic creatures whose source material is their cartoon counterparts feels like a perversion of what they're meant to represent because the realism saps them of all the personal and physical traits that made them unique in the cartoons. At the time of writing, the adaptation of The Lion King hasn't come out yet, but we do have a trailer. First, look at Scar in the 1994 release. His darker, more sinister color scheme combined with the iconic Scar and his piercing green eyes all point to him being an intimidating and powerful villain. He is a force to be reckoned with, and I feel uneasy seeing him in the opening scenes of the movie because his personality oozes evil. That cute, innocent little Simba shouldn't have to be around. As something, something, insert creepy uncle joke here. Now look at him in the trailer for the 2019 re-release, slated to be hitting theaters in mid-July. If it weren't for Scar's opening monologue in the trailer that reminisces his first lines in the cartoon movie, odds are that we wouldn't be able to tell him apart from the other lions. Sure, the trailer preys on nostalgia and is keen on pointing out, hey, look at what, uh, we, we took that and made it this. You can't deny that this is Simba. Without context though, one lion looks pretty identical to the next. That's racist. What I'm saying here is that as soon as you literally interpret Scar as a lion or Jafar from the Aladdin movies as a man with evil intent, the details of their designs are completely lost and they become nothing more than what they look like on the screen. The personalities of these characters are connected to their appearances, and by reducing them to the most common denominator, they are robbed of that. I understand that not everything about a character has to be appearance though, and for an example, we'll just look at Alan Rickman's character Hans Gruber in Die Hard. His appearance isn't the most intimidating, but he is a memorable character through his actions and through Rickman's portrayal of him. In the same way, Scar's cartoonified facial expressions add so much to his character. Without the medium of a cartoon to work with, his facial expressions are muted, if they even exist in this movie in the first place. Actually, you know, now that I think about it, I think that Simba has the same expression on his face in the trailer in three different scenarios. That's, uh, that's not good. By definition, cartoons are meant to be simplified artistic interpretations of reality, and as such it leaves room for interpretation and allows for things that wouldn't be physically possible for these animals in the real world. Timon dressing in drag and doing the hula for example, which I really hope they don't try to recreate with the realistic adaptation because that would be nightmare fuel. Regardless if Simba can have facial expressions that would otherwise be impossible for real lions to emulate or if Timon throws on a lay, we still know that these characters are meant to be a lion and a meerkat. They may be unrealistic, sure, but that doesn't mean that we need them to be translated into realistic-looking animals. 
Yet, despite all of this, the adaptations are already being made. And the problem is that if any of these characters were to maintain the same cartoony, over-the-top attitude in their adaptations, then they'd probably be shunned for trying too hard to bring an element of humor and personality that simply can't exist in a realistic film. Unless a movie is specifically written with both a cartoon and realistic setting in mind, then they usually fall flat with audiences. They do well in the box office though, so eh, what the hell do they care? The only film that I know of that pulled off the cartoon character in the real world shtick well was Enchanted, where the running joke for the movie was how terribly misfit a stereotypical Disney princess would be if she found herself in a modern day New York City. The key operatives here are the words running joke, because it's meant to be comedic. If Disney tried to pass off the same thing with these adaptations of beloved films, they would be burned at the stake. We also tend to underestimate just how poorly CGI ages, and while I've been calling the Disney revamp movies realistic adaptations in the case of Lion King and The Jungle Book, they really are just computer animated films at their core. So following that logic, I present to you another computer animated film, the original Ice Age, which was released in 2002. For its time, it was a great computer animated movie, but nearly two decades have passed since release and its age is really starting to show. Meanwhile, the 2D cartoon films like Robin Hood and The Jungle Book, though some of the strokes look a little rough at times, still hold up to this day, despite those films being released in 1973 and 1967. Okay, those films are actually a lot older than I expected them to be, though that kind of that drives my points even further home. These films are so successful because of their timelessness, and as such, it's a shame to see Disney poaching the audience of those films for the sake of a CGI film that will be eventually cited as inferior to the older cartoon versions anyway. It's frustrating because instead of getting new films with engaging characters and unique settings, we're getting the same movie again, except it's devoid of most of what made the movie fun to watch in the first place. It's also insulting to people like myself who grew up watching Disney films because we can be damn sure that the oligopoly that Disney has in the movie industry means that they won't be inclined to listen to their fans worldwide as long as the sound of profit hitting their bank accounts is louder. Before I get misinterpreted though, I don't want to see Disney fail. I want them to use the power that they have to make something creative and memorable that reminds us of the cartoons of the past. Sure, these movies can be rather juvenile at times, but if Disney's last release was Inside Out or Moana even, and they had gone silent film-wise because they were working on their next big thing and making it as perfect as possible, I'd take that option in a heartbeat over any of the films that have been released since Moana. Bring back the 90s, early 2000s era of Disney films that brought us Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, Pocahontas, Toy Story, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Hercules, Mulan, A Bug's Life, Tarzan, Emperor's New Groove, Atlantis, Monsters Inc., Lilo and Stitch, Finding Nemo, Brother Bear, and The Incredibles. Not like this though, like this. Thank you guys so much for watching, hope you guys did enjoy this slight little rant video. I'm not sure if it's a rant or if it was exactly a discussion, but if you guys didn't like what you see in here and you want to see more, you can uh, click the subscribe button, hit the bell thing, I guess. I don't know. Is that like a YouTuber thing for me to say? S uh, you gotta smash the smash the bell. You just gotta like buttons. Yeah, there's but buttons. All right, cool. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Hope you all have a great day, night, or space cycle, depending on when and where you watch this video, and I will see you on the flip side.